Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the BlackBerry Classic. And as the name suggests, this is here to appeal to traditional BlackBerry users, but delivers a more modern operating system. This is running BlackBerry OS 10.3, which is the same software on the Passport and other more modern BlackBerrys. But it preserves that traditional portrait style form factor that a lot of BlackBerry users prefer. So that includes a four row QWERTY keyboard, along with that BlackBerry tool belt, which incorporates an optical trackpad, which a lot of people prefer to use. Now this is a fairly compact phone, so this can be used one-handed as opposed to the BlackBerry Passport, which is quite a bit larger. This is also a bit cheaper than the BlackBerry Passport, but the specs do reflect the cheaper price point. So this is powered by a dual core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon processor with an Adreno 225 GPU. We have 16 gigs of internal storage along with two gigs of RAM, but of course we have a micro SD card slot that does support 128 gigs. The display is fairly small at 3.5 inches with a resolution of 720 by 720, good for 294 PPI. That's significantly smaller and lower resolution than the BlackBerry Passport. All right, so let's go ahead and crack into our BlackBerry. I've already cut the tape along the back, just gonna lift the lid here. And there we go. So the BlackBerry Passport again, just looks like a traditional BlackBerry, like the BlackBerry Bold or something like that. Go ahead and lift it out of the box here. So nice form factor, it doesn't feel as strange as the BlackBerry Passport, it feels pretty traditional, pretty normal. You can reach your thumb across the display and use the physical QWERTY keyboard one-handed while still preserving a nice grip on the phone. All right, so let's go ahead and peel off the plastic on the back. We also have some plastic covering the camera module up here. We also have a little plastic covering the display, which again is Gorilla Glass 3, so it's nice, scratch resistant, and durable. All right, so let's go ahead and set this aside for just a moment while we take a look at what's in the box here. First thing first, we have a little pamphlet explaining that you do have 30 day direct support from BlackBerry, so give them a call if you need anything. You also have your SIM ejection tool. This is also the micro SD uh, ejection tool here. I actually think it's kind of neat that the shape of the SIM ejection tool replicates the trackpad. So inside we have lots of paperwork, I assume in different languages here. So we have BlackBerry Classic smartphone. Looks like a quick start guide that explains how to use your BlackBerry Classic. And of course I'll go through that in this video and it is in multiple languages. We also have our safety and regulatory information in multiple languages. Inside we'll also find a micro USB 2.0 charging cable. And then we also have our BlackBerry branded USB travel adapter here. So if you look at the back, you'll see your BlackBerry branding along with the USB port on along the side. We also have a set of in-ear style headphones with an inline remote control and microphone. And of course we do have replacement ear tips if you want to change the style as well as the fit. All right, so let's take a closer look at the design of the phone, which again is a pretty classic BlackBerry form. It's a very comfortable size. It's about the right size, so you can operate the phone one-handed. We have a 3.5 inch LCD IPS panel, 720 by 720. So fairly small screen, but it does get the job done. It's not as crisp as I'd like to see, especially when you're reading text, but it's not too bad. So you can see along the side, we have this nice metal frame, which gives you this nice rugged feeling foam. It feels pretty high quality. Along the back, we have this textured rubbery material, which feels really grippy in the hand. It also is fairly rugged and durable because it is impact resistant thanks to this kind of soft material. Toward the center we have this BlackBerry branding. Toward the top we have an 8 megapixel camera with an LED flash and our classic branding. Along the right side you'll find your volume controls along with a multi-purpose button toward the center. This can be used to uh, launch the BlackBerry voice assistant or to pause media playback and other things which I'll demonstrate in this video. At the top of the phone we have our sleep wake power on and off button which is flanked by two microphones. We also have our headphones jack which does incorporate an FM antenna so when you plug in headphones you can use an FM radio. On the left side you'll find these two trays one is a micro SD card slot one is a nano sim tray these are metal trays that pop out using the included sim ejection tool or a paper clip so again nice high quality construction here you can also see the band along the side is metal until you get to the bottom of the phone here you can see there's a little seam which is where we have this plastic trim piece which is color matched to the metal it does look pretty good and pretty seamless. Now you can see down here we have these two really loud stereo speakers, which do a pretty good job. We also have a micro USB 2.0 charging and syncing cable. Of course, we have our full four row QWERTY keyboard and I'll demonstrate that in this video. And then we have our BlackBerry tool belt and I'll explain what these buttons do. Toward the top, we have our earpiece proximity sensor and the ambient light sensor, along with a two megapixel front facing camera, good for 720p video. And we do have an LED notification light. Now there are a number of ways to unlock this device. You can press the trackpad button and it wakes it up and you can swipe to unlock it. Of course, you can also use the power button up top to open and unlock the device. Alternatively, you can also swipe up on the bottom of the screen and it unlocks it automatically. You can also peek at your lock screen just by quickly swiping up and down on the bottom of the screen and then you can swipe up again to unlock it. Now, if you want 
to lock it again, just quickly swipe up and down on the bottom of the screen. Now on the lock screen, you can tap any one of these icons to see your notifications. Now you can't scroll through them or anything like that, but you can tap on any one of them to open them. So there you go, it takes you right to that app, in this case, Twitter. Now another thing you can do on the lock screen is to activate bedside mode, which will meet your notifications and bring up this clock. So on the home screen, you can see our recent apps and you're limited to eight, but you can rearrange these. And these recent apps are really kind of live apps. Uh, so they will update in real time if they support it. So for example, the weather app will update in real time. So instead of having to open the app, you can actually see the current temperature instead. And you can also close them out just by tapping the X in the lower right corner here. If you swipe to the right, you can see all our available apps here and you can tap and hold on any one of these to delete the app like so. So you can uninstall it if you want. You can also folder them just by dragging and dropping them over each other. Now, not all apps can be uninstalled, such as BlackBerry Blend, the Clock app, and that sort of thing. Only the apps that are kind of third-party apps can be uninstalled. Now, I can also swipe all the way to the right to get to BlackBerry Hub, and you can swipe all the way to the right again to see all your notifications. So you can see the Hub, you can see the Priority Hub, which prioritizes messages depending on your activity. So these are messages that it determines based on my activity what's important. So you can see uh, your BBM messages. I have not set that up. You can see your text messages. You can also see Gmail. So these are my Gmail accounts. I have plugged in my Google accounts. So I receive my Gmail, my calendars and contacts and that sort of thing are synced to my device. You can also see I've also added my IMAP account here. We also have my Twitter account and that sort of thing and visual voicemail, pin messages and emergency alerts, calls, that sort of thing. Now on the hub, you can see it just aggregates everything into this chronological order. I can also swipe all the way down to see my calendar events up top. I can tap and hold on an item here to act upon it. But of course, the options depend on the type of uh, message or type of notification you're looking at. So you can see I'm looking at an email so I can reply to it, forward it, and that sort of thing. I can also compose a new message from here and I can use any one of my available uh, relevant apps. So my Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, pin messages, that sort of thing, or BBM. I also have a back button here so I can go back to where I last was and I can also search if I want. Now you can see all the attachments in your BlackBerry Hub. So it'll actually go through all your emails and just pick out all the attachments so you can quickly download them. Now in the upper right corner here, you can manage your messages by bringing this up and deleting individual messages. You can also go up here to see specific folders under your BlackBerry Hub so you can see all your calls, all your Gmails and that sort of thing. So if you just wanna see your Gmail inbox, just select it and it brings up all your inbox items. Now, when you're in the BlackBerry Hub, you can actually respond to text messages without leaving BlackBerry Hub. This is similar to pop-up notifications. So when you receive a pop-up notifications, they'll pop up along the top here and you can respond to them without leaving what you're doing. Now, if you wanna refresh your feed in the BlackBerry Hub, just swipe down five times in the upper right corner and it will reload everything for you. Now, if you ever want to peek at your notifications, just swipe up from the bottom of the screen and you'll see your pending notifications and the counts. You can also just swipe to the right to launch it. So you have to be a little quick here. Come on, let's do it. There we go. It takes you right to the BlackBerry Hub. Now, the navigation keys up here look like they're capacitive buttons, but they are physical buttons. So when you push on them, they do click. Of course, we have our optical trackpad, which is also a select button. Now, the interface on the Classic has been modified to make use of these buttons here. So for example, if you're within an app, you can swipe up to get back to the home screen. Alternatively, you can hit the end call button. So basically this acts as your home button. So for example, if I move away here, if I go to my app or if I tap that, it takes me back to the home screen. Now, if you're in an app, you can hit this menu key, which is that Blackberry icon that brings up all the menu items for this specific app. You can also swipe down from the top to get to additional settings that are relevant to this app. Now on the left side, we have our call button, which will automatically activate our phone app. So you can quickly jump to your phone app just by hitting that button anywhere in the system. Now, one of the neat things with the Blackberry Classic is the return of the trackpad, which works system-wide. So you can use this no matter where you are. So you can scrub between your available pages. You can scrub up and down through text. You can select items like so. So for, for example, if I want to launch YouTube, just select it. Now, when you use the trackpad in certain apps, you actually get a cursor that appears here that allows you to select specific items. It also allows you to scrub through the pages. Although sometimes it doesn't work terribly well. So I just end up using the screen here, but you can also select certain items on the page here. So if you want to select this, just select it and it will launch the page. Now this is very much a traditional BlackBerry keyboard. So we have our Alt button for selecting one of the characters. As you can see, the numbers are actually on one side of the phone instead of across the top like you would expect on a traditional QWERTY keyboard. You can see all the symbols are also integrated in here. So again, you just select Alt to select one of the alternative characters. We also have this symbol key down here, which brings up a virtual keyboard with all of our symbols and numbers. And you just click it again to get to the next page of them and then click it again to hide it. Now to capitalize a letter, just tap and hold on it. And for certain characters, you have additional options that pop up when you continue holding. So for example, if you're typing German, you may want O umlaut, which pops up here. Of course, this works with other vowels. 
Now, if you tap the Shift key or the Alt key, you'll see the indicator in the upper right corner. Now, if you want Caps Lock, just tap and hold the Shift key and you'll see the Caps Lock icon. We also have Voice Dictation here. To activate, just tap and hold the Voice button. This is a test of Voice Dictation, period. Now, when you're done speaking, it determines that automatically and enters the text. It doesn't dictate in real time. Now, the great thing with this trackpad is if you want to edit your text, you can just swipe to your specific term or specific point instead of kind of having to tap around to get to those specific small touch points. Now, I can also highlight a word here. Just tap and hold on it with the trackpad, and you get to editing options like cut, copy, paste, and sharing, and other things. Now, if you just tap on the text here, you also get to this little editor, which allows you to precisely locate a specific point in the text to edit here. And then you can also tap these arrows to move around. Now, there are many app-specific keyboard shortcuts, which you can memorize to speed up productivity. So, for example, when you're in the browser, if you want to go to the bottom of the page, hit B. Go to the top, hit T. If you want to reload it, just hit L. You can also search for text on the page just by hitting S. We have things like H for history. We have W to access our tabs. We can open up our bookmarks by hitting K. We can also hit the space bar to advance down or shift and space bar to advance back up. We can also hit R to enter reader mode and there are many other keyboard shortcuts. And I'll post a link in the description below so you can take a look at all the ones that are available. Now to get into universal search, all you have to do is start typing your search term on the keyboard and it brings it up right away. So for example, if I search for Android here, it searches everything. So it searches, uh, calendar events, contacts, messages, and that sort of thing. And I have this little scrubber along the side which allows me to jump to those specific categories. Now if you look down here, we have extended search or extend search. Uh, so you can search Bing, Google, Yahoo, Help, Maps, Twitter, uh, Blackberry World, Evernote. Now when you start typing your search, you actually bring up Blackberry Assistant here. So you can go to this eye icon to see what you can do with Blackberry Assistant, or you can just tap and hold this center click button along the side. What's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills? The forecast for Rochester Hills, United States on Thursday is colder with flurries with temperatures between 4 and minus 11 degrees. Set an appointment for tomorrow at 9 a.m. to visit my sister. Would you like to save your event, edit your event, or cancel? Now, if you're listening to music or watching video, you can use the button along the side here, the center click button, to pause playback or resume it. Works system-wide here. So I can continue listening to video while it's playing in the background under recent apps. I can pause it, resume it. Now, when you're on the home screen and swipe down with a single finger, you can get to your quick settings. But this works differently when you're within an app. So if you're in an app and you swipe down, you get to settings for that specific app. And if you want to get to quick settings, you have to use a two-finger gesture. Now, let's take a look at quick settings. As you can see, we have two pages here. Some of these top are pretty basic. We have a flashlight, turns on the flashlight, but some of them have two buttons. So when you're in that situation, basically these act as quick toggles here. So we have Wi-Fi that turns on and off, but if you want to get to your Wi-Fi control panel, just tap that one, takes you right to the control panel. So you can see we can turn our alarm on, which is set to 6 a.m. I can tap on it to adjust the alarm, and the interface is kind of neat here, so you can scrub uh, to the time you want. So like a lot of BlackBerry optimized apps, you can swipe in from the left edge to get to additional options or use that menu button to bring up even more. And again, you can swipe down to get to your settings. Now, BlackBerry gives you a lot of customization options for do not disturb. So, in fact, you actually have these profiles here. So you can independently control your ringtone uh, for uh, the active profile here. So right now, the active profile is just normal. But you see, we have all these other profiles to select from. Normal, phone call only, vibrate only, silent meeting, bedside, and you can see preview of how these behave. Now, if you want to modify them, just go to meeting mode here. You can select these specific apps that have permission under this mode. You can select the volume, vibrate only, uh, LED flash, instant preview. TV, that sort of thing, all of it is controllable under here. And you can add additional profiles, you can rearrange them, and you can add them to quick settings. So when you add these profiles to quick setting, uh, when you go to your quick settings here, you can actually toggle between those profiles just by tapping this icon. Now I'm gonna do a little cheating here because I've already covered BlackBerry Blend in my BlackBerry Passport review, so I'm just gonna drop in that clip here. Another really neat feature here is called BlackBerry Blend. This is kind of similar to Apple's continuity feature. So basically, this can connect to devices like your iPad or or your Mac or your PC. And basically all I have to do is install software on those devices and have direct access to your BlackBerry wirelessly or wired if you prefer. So you can see right now I have two devices connected, my iPad and my desktop, which is an iMac in the other room here. But we're gonna take a look at this on the iPad. So if we launch the app here, you can see it directly connects wirelessly to my uh, BlackBerry Passport. So I can see this BlackBerry Blend dashboard, which aggregates everything in real time. So you can see my BlackBerry Hub, my email, my BBM, and my SMS message 
messages so I can receive and respond to SMS right on my tablet or my PC. You can also see my calendar timeline down here. So again, a nice quick view. You can also see down here, we can jump to things like our calendar. We can see our calendar in various ways here. And you have a little home button in the upper left. So you can see the BlackBerry Hub, which works just like you would expect with your messages, your BBM, your SMS messages, and your Gmail, all organized by chronological order or by priority. And you have all the same controls you would expect on your BlackBerry itself. And then we have our file manager. This is where we can manage content like our music files. If you want to load music into your library, this is where you do it. Of course, this is best done on a Mac or PC where you can just drag and drop your files to your BlackBerry. And again, that can all be done wirelessly or wired to speed things up. You can also see we have our photos. This is where you can access your photo library, all the photos you've taken on your device. Of course, it doesn't look like it's loading it very quickly here, but you can see your still photos as well as your movies and that sort of thing. We also have our settings in the upper right corner so we can disconnect, we can turn off notifications or remain signed on if we want so it doesn't sign us off automatically. We also have our device monitor, which will monitor our battery life and what is actually taking up all your battery life. You can see your mobile data, you can see your storage, your CPU usage, and what is using up your CPU. You can also go up here to see your memory, so you can see what, uh, how much RAM you have left and what's using up all your memory. Uh, and if you have certain apps that are using it, so for example, if we go to tutorials here, you can actually uh, close that specific app to free up some RAM. We also have a battery saver mode here, which you can toggle on and off, and you can adjust the behavior of battery saver just by going to the settings here. So you can see you can have it turn on automatically when the battery gets below 20%, and you can adjust the behavior. So you can adjust the screen brightness, uh, limit CPU performance, turn off advanced interactions, turn off data services, and that sort of thing. Next up, let's take a look at settings. One of the things you can do with quick settings is modify it and rearrange it. So you can select specific toggles to add, such as bedside mode, which you can activate by swiping down from the lock screen. We also have NSC, which you can toggle on and off mobile hotspotting, internet tethering, and location services. You can also rearrange them by activating this icon, and you can move them around like so, or restore the defaults. Under volume, we can control our volume. Of course, you can also use the buttons along the side. This also allows us to see what's playing in the background. So we have our media controls here, so you can play, pause, or of course, you can use the center click button along the side. We also have headphone audio boost, which is off by default. This will boost audio to those headphones. We can also activate music shortcuts, so you can use the volume controls along the side just by pressing and holding on them to advance or reverse a track. Now, on by default is always adjust media volume. If this is turned off, this allows you to adjust notification volume when media isn't playing. Under accounts, this is where we can plug in our Yahoo or Gmail accounts, LDAP and IMAP accounts, and all that stuff can be set up here. We also have Facebook and Twitter. Now, really interesting here is shortcuts and speed dial. This is where you can customize shortcuts on the physical keyboard. So, for example, if you want to launch your contacts, all you have to do is tap and hold the corresponding key, in this case, A. So, just tap and hold on it, and it will launch right into your contact, which is very useful. So, you can launch a browser, compose a new message, create a new note, or you can assign additional actions, launch help, lock device, launch calendar, launch BlackBerry Hub, launch BBM, settings, phone, toggle notification modes, clock, create a new task, launch calculator, call voicemail. So there's a lot you can do here. You just have to remember what each button does. So for example, you can lock the device just by tapping and holding the K button. Now there's a lot to take a look at under display. So we can select our home screen wallpaper. Of course, they do give you a library of wallpapers to pick from. Of course, you can use your camera or you can go to your file. So it brings up your file manager and you can select them from your file tree instead. You can also see that we have other options here like our screen brightness, which is pretty standard stuff. You can also, of course also access that quickly from the dropdown. Uh, we also have our font sizes. So you can select the font size that you would prefer. We also have our display color settings. So you can adjust the color temperature here. So a little more basic than the passport, which gives you a a little more uh, controls. We also have HDMI. You can buy an adapter to work with the micro USB port on the bottom to output to HDMI, or you, of course, you can use Miracast to wirelessly broadcast the display. So if you want to share your screen, just bring it up here. You can see that HDMI is not connected, but if you have available wireless Miracast devices on your network, like a Samsung Smart TV, in my case, you can wirelessly broadcast this display to that TV. So you can do screen mirroring or you can just broadcast the media that you're watching right on that display. Now the best way to quickly access screen mirroring is to go to the Wi-Fi control center that comes up when you bring down the drop down quick settings. You'll see Miracast here which allows you to share your screen and activate the feature. 
We have our battery saving mode, which I explored earlier. We have our language and input settings, so you can select one of the available languages here. Uh, you can also see we can select our region, our measurement system, our distance measurement, our trackpad sensitivity, our input languages, prediction and correction, spell checking, feedback, voice dictation, and you can also select an external keyboard. We have our BlackBerry Assistant settings, so you can, again, change the language. You can turn off full assistance uh, so it doesn't talk to you through everything. We have activate with mute key, use assistance when locked, and that sort of thing. So again, lots of stuff going on here. So you can use the uh, BlackBerry Assistant uh, when you're on the lock screen. So all I have to do is tap and hold on it, and we'll bring it up for you. Under device connections, this is where we can select our device name so we can identify it on the network. We can use mobile networks for connecting to other devices. And you can see the devices I've paired to this using the BlackBerry Blend feature. So you can see my iPod and my desktop. We also have BlackBerry Protect. So if we lose the device, we can lock it, we can track it, uh, we can wipe it and that sort of thing. We also have our app manager. So this is where we can, for example, see our default apps for certain actions, uh, card emulation apps, uh, as well as installing apps and its behavior in terms of uh, what you want to allow. So you can allow uh, installation from sources other than the authorized stores, or you can inspect apps before installing. We also have our media sharing. So you can share music, pictures and video over DLNA. So if you have DLNA equipped devices on your network, you can see them here and broadcast them or they can have access to this device. Under storage and access, you have some controls here which are interesting. So for example, if you want to use this as a mass storage device, you do have to enable it. And if you want to activate charge only mode, so if you don't want uh, somebody else to have access to the device when it's connected to an unknown source, you can enable this. So for example, if you go to an airport or something like that, you don't necessarily want to just plug into any source without activating this mode, just in case somebody may have access to it. And of course, you can also select a manual IP address from here as well. And you can access using Wi-Fi. So if you want to access your device, all you have to do is set up a password. We also have advanced interactions, which includes things like lift to wake. So if you handle the device when it's been laying flat on the surface, it will wake up the device. Flip to mute, flip to save power. So if you place this face down, it will activate power saving mode. You can also hold to stay awake. So if you don't want the device to go to sleep when you're using it or holding it, it will prevent it from doing so. Now, in terms of the app selection, pretty standard array of smartphone apps today. So we have text messaging, BBM, a calendar, contacts, and the BlackBerry Hub. So that quickly takes us to the BlackBerry Hub. We also have the two app stores, BlackBerry World and the Amazon App Store. Of course, we have a browser, Docs2Go, which is a document editor, which supports Word, PowerPoint, and Excel documents. So we can create and edit them here. We have maps with turn-by-turn -turn navigation and all the things you expect here. The only thing that's missing is satellite view. You also have a reminders app, pictures for a photo gallery, music, which does include an F tuner all you have to do is plug in a set of headphones we have our video player our story maker for creating videos out of the videos we record with this device we also have our calculator here so we have a standard calculator a tip calculator and a converter the calculator mode here you can swipe between the available options we also have our file manager here, which is a pretty basic file tree. So you can see all the files broken down by other categories like photographs. You can also swipe here to see your connected device. You can see your desktop and your iPad. So if you can access those things, you can go ahead and access those files through your BlackBerry. We also have setup, which will take you through the process of setting up your device with Wi-Fi, your accounts, switching devices so you can transfer from other devices and more. We have tutorials as well. So if you want more detailed information, you can go to this little app here. In fact, this pretty much replicates everything I'm doing here although not in as much detail as I'm showing you. We also have our tutorials here, which will explore how to use, for example, all the navigation keys, learning the gestures, uh, learning how to use the keyboard and text selection tools and other things. Taking a look at the camera app, you can snap your photograph by tapping the icon on the screen. You can also use the trackpad or the spacebar on the keyboard or one of the volume controls along the side here. You can tap anywhere on the scene to adjust focus. You can also tap and hold to lock focus and exposure if you need it and tap anywhere else to release it. You can also record video by just tapping the video icon and you can snap photographs. You can also turn on the LED flash. You can pinch in and out to zoom while recording video. And this does feature digital stabilization or software stabilization stabilization, not optical st stabilization, and you can turn on continuous autofocus that is off by default. So if you go to settings here, you can see we have our modes. We have auto, action, whiteboard, night, and beach or snow. So whiteboard allows you to take photographs of whiteboards while preserving the quality of the text that's on the whiteboard. You can also see that we have our flash settings as well as the ratio. So you have one by one, which is the uh, ratio of the display four by three or 16 by nine. You can turn on HDR. You have your timer settings. We also have several modes down here, which includes time shift, burst, and panoramic 
panorama. Time shift is geared toward taking self-portraits or photographs of other people where faces are detected. Uh, so what will happen is it'll take a burst shot, take a bunch of shots in a row, and you can scrub to the right image. So this allows you to eliminate blanks or other things that may happen in the scene. Now under settings, we'll find things like our video size. So we have up to 1080p or 720p or 720p at 60 frames per second. So unlike the Passport, there is no 1080p at 60 frames per second. Of course, still no 4K. We have face detection we can turn on, auto-suggest, which recommends actions based on the quality of the scene. So if it recommends HDR, you'll see a pop-up and you can quickly turn it on. You can save to your MIDI card. You can display the grid lines, save the original. Uh, you can activate video stabilization, which is off by default. We also have continuous video focus, which again is off by default as well. So you can toggle that on here and you can geotag your pictures. Now in terms of camera quality, it's definitely not as good as the BlackBerry Passport or other 8 megapixel cameras out there. I think the biggest issues are color reproduction. It tends to be a little flat, a little washed out. And then uh, exposure. It tends to overexpose some brights and underexpose low lights. So it doesn't do a really good job finding the right balance. And then focusing is kind of slow. Uh, I spent a lot of time trying to find the right focus point with this camera. That was the same issue with the Passport, although the Passport is a little more accurate and a little sharper. Video is also pretty decent here, but like a lot of cameras without optical image stabilization that's not the best but it gets the job done and video is pretty sharp Alrighty guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out that front-facing camera, which is again, two megapixels, good for 720p HD video, which does a pretty decent job here. Pretty good exposure compensation and color accuracy. So you can see I have a huge bright chandelier right behind me, but you can still see my face is not overcompensating. It's a pretty decent job. Uh, we can also take photographs while recording video here, and the audio pickup is really good. Now, like the Passport, we do have a set of stereo speakers on the bottom which are loud and clear, so you hear your notifications at all times. So let's go and take a listen to these speakers. What's up, guys? Mike here, the Detroit Board, with a look at the new BlackBerry Passport, perhaps the most exciting new BlackBerry in many years. And that's thanks to the fact that we get this flagship-style large phone with a new and interesting design while retaining all those classic BlackBerry features, such as a... Now let's go and take a listen to the Passport. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Board, with a look at the new BlackBerry Passport, perhaps the most exciting new BlackBerry in many years. And that's thanks to the fact that we get this flagship-style large phone with a new and interesting design while retaining all those classic BlackBerry features, such as a portrait... So clearly, the Passport sounds louder, clearer, with more depth, and the more hollow-sounding and quieter BlackBerry Classic, which again is to be expected for a more premium and larger phone. Now, I briefly want to touch upon the difference between the Classic and the Passport. Obviously, the Passport is BlackBerry's flagship phone, much larger, with much higher end specs. So we have a 4.5-inch display, much higher resolution at 453 pixels per inch versus the 294 pixels per inch on this 3.5-inch display. Both of them are LCD IPS. Uh, the Classic does seem to be a bit brighter than the Passport, which is useful in some circumstances. The keyboard is also very different on the Passport. It's much wider with larger buttons and only three rows instead of four rows with a less traditional layout out than the classic here so a lot of people will be more used to this style keyboard than the passport although i find you do get used to the passport keyboard pretty quickly the classic does lack the navigation keys or utility belt on the classic uh, which a lot of people prefer there are some software differences here so for example with the larger display you have more app icons on the home screen you also have more room for the uh, recent apps or the open apps viewer here which you have to scroll through on the classic versus the single page view on the passport now on the lower left we have quick access to the blackberry hub on the classic versus the phone dialer on the passport and that's because the classic has uh, the same button on the tool belt here all i have to do is hit that button it takes you right to the phone dialer now there are some other differences mostly related to the keyboard so the classic features shortcuts and speed dial options which is not available on the uh, passport which allows you to quickly launch apps or perform certain actions just by pressing and holding keys on the keyboard now instead of a trackpad on the passport the entire keyboard is actually your trackpad which allows you to scroll around on pages it's not as versatile as the uh, classics trackpad but it does a pretty good job and it's certainly a lot more surface area to work with now, one of the things I really like about the BlackBerry Passport that is not available on the Classic is the auto-completion and the swipe gesture on the keyboard that allows you to complete the sentence with less typing. So when you start typing, it's able to predict what your next word or punctuation might be, and all you have to do is swipe up on the keyboard, and it completes the sentence for you. Now, generally speaking, both phones are well-designed with a nice, hefty build quality to them with that metal frame and those nice, soft-touch materials on the back. But, of course, the Passport feels a little more premium. It does feature a little more metal than the uh, Classic. 
basic, uh, which goes to reason because this is a more premium phone, but it's not too heavy, not too bulky. It feels pretty nice, especially if you have large hands like me. But of course, the problem with this wide style keyboard is the fact you cannot use it one-handed. There's also a pretty big difference between the cameras here, 13 megapixels versus 8 megapixels, 1080p at 60 frames per second versus 1080p at 30 frames per second, although you do get 720p at 60 if you want that. Uh, this also features optical image stabilization, while this does not. And generally speaking, the camera on the Passport simply performs quite a bit better. Now, ultimately, there's a lot to like about the BlackBerry Classic, especially if you're a traditional BlackBerry user. This phone is really geared toward productivity and efficiency, especially with those keyboard shortcuts, which I think is a big deal. This allows you to use the phone really quickly once you get used to those shortcuts. They also do give you a full suite of apps, so all the functions you expect on modern smartphones are here. But of course, the app ecosystem is smaller, so if you're used to using other smartphones, I think you're gonna feel a little handicapped here, but that's really only an issue if you're coming from other smartphones to a BlackBerry, but if you're a BlackBerry user, I don't think that will be a big concern. In fact, you have more apps now than you ever did before, so things are getting much better. And the operating system, I think, is cleverly designed, especially with this BlackBerry Hub, which does a really nice job aggregating the overwhelming number of notifications I think most of us are receiving these days, and allows you to quickly manage them and respond to them. So again, geared toward uh, productivity, efficiency, and speed, and I really like that. I also think the handset is a perfect size. It can be used one-handed, feels comfortable in the hand, and it's nice and lightweight and not too thin, not too bulky, feels just about right. So I can understand why a lot of users prefer this form factor. I'm also pretty impressed by the build quality here with that nice middle frame around the side along with that nice grippable texture on the back. It feels really durable, really life proof. So this is definitely a phone I think that can get a lot of work done without having to worry about breaking it, dropping it, or scratching it or anything like that. It's really a workhorse. Now I think there are some drawbacks here. One of them is the size of the screen and the aspect ratio. So it's not great for watching movies uh, because movies are widescreen and that gives you very little screen real estate to work with when watching movies and with such a low resolution display I, I can't say it's really low resolution but it's not as pixel dense as a lot of other smartphones today and when you're dealing with such a small area of the screen playing the movie it doesn't look as crisp as you'd like to see so it's not great for watching media but of course it will get the job done in a pinch. I also really like this keyboard. I quickly got used to it. In fact, I can use it without looking at the keys now because the uh, keys themselves are really tactile. That really isn't the case with a BlackBerry Passport, which doesn't feel as tactile as I'd like to see here. But this keyboard feels just about perfect. I actually think this is a better keyboard than the Passport. Now, I really like the software design. I like some of these software ideas here. So it's not the design, it's just the overall performance. And that's because they've really handicapped the performance of this device by putting low-end specs here, and it does harm the speed and performance of the operating system, which I think is a shame because I really like this form factor. Something like the BlackBerry Passport has a much smoother operating phone. It does a better job handling some of the non-native apps from the Amazon App Store, which do tend to run slow on BlackBerry OS. So this phone can be unpredictably slow at times with certain apps, unlike the BlackBerry Passport. Battery life is also excellent on this device. It's better than most smartphones I use today. I'm able to get at least 24 hours out of this phone before hitting the charger, but usually more than that. And that's with heavy use, especially in my review period. So in the end, the BlackBerry Classic stands out for not being old, but being unique in the world of smartphones that pretty much all do the same thing in the same way. So that's gonna do it for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.